Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. Today we're going to get YSF up and running. We're going to use the W0CHP dashboard, which is an extension of PyStar, which some of you may already be familiar with, some of you may not, but we're going to start at enough of a beginning that it won't matter either way. And at the end, we'll be making fusion contacts over the internet. Some things that you're going to need to get started with are a Raspberry Pi of some kind. A Raspberry Pi 02W is probably the lowest Raspberry Pi that I would recommend for this, or a Raspberry Pi 3, or a Raspberry Pi 4. You can also start off on a Raspberry Pi 4 and then put it back onto a Raspberry Pi 2W if you would like a faster install experience. Right now I have a Raspberry Pi 4 that I am using and it's just because it's the one I happen to be using today, not for any particular reason. The other thing you're going to need is an MMDVM, multi-mode digital voice modem, MMDVM, and they come in a variety of flavors, and this one is a hat. You can also use this with a serial board and connect it up to a non-Raspberry Pi type computer over a USB port instead of through the GPIO pins on the top. Most of what we're going to do here today will work with either the hat, the hardware attached on top or whatever that is that connects through the GPIO pins, or it will work with the serial version that connects through the USB port. But all of what we're doing here today is going to be Raspberry Pi based in this tutorial. The other thing that you're going to need is some kind of fusion radio. So the Yezu FT70D is probably the cheapest way to get into this and it's a fantastic radio to do the job. And that's the one that I'm going to be using today. Or the 1D, 2D, 3D, 5D, the 200, the 300, and the 500 mobile radios and probably a couple of other radios will also work just fine for you. As long as it says that it's C4FM or Yezu System Fusion compatible, it'll work for what we're doing today. Don't worry too much about a lot of the nitty gritty details. Feel free to rewind the video as we're going through or look for some notes in the description down below because I will be taking notes for you so you don't have to. We're going to go to w0chp.net. This is where Chip has his dashboard that you can download. This link will be in the description down below for you. While we're here, we'll take a look at some of the other hardware that this is compatible with. It looks like it works with an Orange Pi Zero, a Nano Pi Neo, a Zumspot Mini, and a Zumspot Elite. We're going to do the Raspberry Pi, but the process is fairly similar for all of these things. Raspberry Pi disk image download. So I'm going to click on this and I'm going to download it. And a dialog box will pop up asking you where you want to save it. Just remember where you saved it because you're going to need to open it up in the next step. Now that we have that downloaded, we need some way to write it to an SD card. The tool that I recommend for writing SD cards is Belina Etcher. It is super painless, super easy. The website for this will be linked down below as well, etcher.belina.io. And then we just click on download and pick your favorite operating system. This will work on just about any operating system out there, which is fantastic. I'm running this on Windows today, so I'm going to download and install the Windows version. If you really wanna make this easy, use the portable version and click the download there and it will just run. You won't even need to do any kind of installer. Okay, next up, grab your SD card. I have this SD card holder that I keep all of my Raspberry Pi and Zygu X6100 SD card images in, as well as my DigiPi SD card images. I'm gonna pull out one of those cards and I'm gonna pull out the card converter. They make these that hold the small cards or you may have a small card reader or you may not and you can use a USB adapter. And I'll have one of those linked in the description down below for you as well. But right now I'm gonna use the big SD card adapter and I have an SD card reader right in my laptop. Flash from file. Remember that last part where we wanted to remember where the download file was downloaded to for the dashboard? This is why we need it. I pick the file that I downloaded, the WPSD underscore RPI latest, and choose open. And it is a .xz file, which is a compressed file, but Belina Etcher is your best friend here because it will automatically decompress that for you. It's already got my SD card picked, and I know it's the SD card in question because this is 63.9 gigabytes, and my internal hard disk is, number one, not, uh, not selectable, because that's one of the cool things about this tool. But number two, my internal hard disk is a terabyte and it's not 64 gigabytes. So I know I'm safe there. And then I just click the flash button. Windows is prompting me that I'm going to do something dangerous and overwrite a drive. Uh, I, I want to do that, so I'm going to go ahead and say yes. And away we go. And the flashing is completed. So next up, what we need to do is create our Wi-Fi configuration file to make our lives a lot easier. Remove the SD card, SD card reader, whatever, from the machine and then put it back in the same machine. What happened was Etcher was your friend again, and now that the image is done, it, it automatically went ahead
disk the drive. We need to mount it again so we can put our Wi-Fi config on. Let's do that. Okay, back on the W0CHP website at the top, there is this WPA config generator tool. Let's go ahead and do that. They're going to ask you for your SSID, and then they're going to ask you for your passphrase, and then your country. So fill out all three of these, your SSID, your passphrase, and your country, and then hit generate config. When this pops up, it's going to have the encoded version. It's not really encrypted. It's just encoded of your SSID and of your passphrase. That didn't work for me. There is a trick where you can edit this file and fix the problem, and we'll do that real quick. So I'm gonna download the config file, and this goes onto the boot partition of your Raspberry Pi SD card that you just created. It should be marked as boot in your file manager. Just save it straight to the boot drive in the root directory. Okay, a few quick edits of your WPA supplicant file that we just downloaded. I'm gonna uncomment the SSID in text and I'm gonna comment the encoded one and I'm gonna uncomment the PSK pre-shared key in text and then I'm going to comment out the encoded one. And then all you have to do is save that in Atom, which is the editor I'm using here, it's Control S. It's now saved and then unmount the drive and put it in your Pi. When your Raspberry Pi first boots up, it will automatically resize the file system on the machine so that it uses the entire SD card. When you first write it out, it's only gonna write out just the software and then you're gonna have a huge empty SD card that you can't use anything on. So that needs to happen. That's gonna take maybe a couple of minutes. When it's done, it's gonna automatically reboot start itself up and join your network for the first time. So go get yourself a cup of coffee, come back, we'll be here, we'll be ready for you. If everything went well, you should be able to go to http colon slash slash pi hyphen star dot local and it should pop right up. If not, you can use a tool like Angry IP Scanner, which will be linked in the description down below to scan your network and see if you can find the device or you can plug a screen in to your Raspberry Pi and it will be written on the screen. If you're on Linux machines, you can run Nmap and do a ping scan of your network and see which hosts come back to a ping scan. And then you'll figure out where you need to go by IP address instead of by name. It should work by name though. When you first come in, it's gonna tell you that there's no mode defined and then it will redirect you to the config panel. The config panel is gonna ask you for a user ID and password. The default user ID is pi hyphen star and the password is Raspberry. So we're just going to go ahead and sign in now that we've got that user ID and password in place. And we need to define a couple of things. 438800 sounds like a good frequency. We'll go ahead and use 438800. No problem there. And really, you just go from the top down and you fill this stuff out as you go along. So this is an MMDVM host. This is going to run in simplex mode because I only have one antenna. If you have two antennas, you can run it in duplex mode. I don't have one of those fancy two antenna ones. The host name is what we typed to get here. I don't have a problem leaving it this way. If you have more than one hotspot and you want to have one for YSF and one for DSTAR and one for DMR, maybe change your host names. Your call sign, mine, is KM9G. Put in yours, not mine. And put yours in correctly. Don't do it like I did. Time zone is going to be America slash Chicago for me, but put in your own time zone. And you can do just like I did. You can just start typing in time zones instead of searching through pages and pages and pages of options there. It's a big time saver. I really like that. Language is English US. Perfect. Update notifier is enabled. This will tell me if there's any updates. And the update process is really easy. Latitude, longitude, put these in if you desire. Town locator, put that in if you desire also. For me, I'm going to be on the road. This stuff's going to change a lot. I'm just going to leave it the way it is for now. It's not 100% necessary, but it's not a problem if you do put it in and probably has a lot to do with this APRS gateway type deal here too. All of these settings here you can leave alone and all of these settings down here are your Wi-Fi settings. You can leave those alone. And then this is what you would call your auto access point if there wasn't one. And then this is your remote access password. I'm not gonna change any of those things. I'm gonna pick any one of these apply changes button and click it. Now it's telling me that the modem selection has been updated and I need to reselect my modem. This might happen from time to time. I'll show you a good trick to figure out what your modem is. Radio modem type and there's a drop down and there's a pretty big list of modems here and some of them kind of overlap each other. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to come up to the top and I think it's admin, advanced, and then under tools we're going to pick SSH access. And the login for this is the same login to get into the admin page. Pystar is the user and raspberry is the password and we are logged in so you'll see here that it says pystar command line tools all begin with pystar dash so i'm going to type in pystar dash and i'm going to hit the tab key to com to show me all of the things that start with pystar dash that i have permission to run 
The first time it flashed because there was multiple choices, I hit the tab key one more time. Here's that list that we were talking about. And what I am looking for is Pystar dash find modem. And you can see it in the first column over here, Pystar dash find modem. So I'm gonna type in find modem and press enter. And it says you need to be root for this. So I'm gonna do sudo Pystar dash find modem. And it's gonna do a little hardware probe and tell me what my modem is. And my modem blinked to life, that's pretty cool. Okay, so what I know now is I have an MM DVM HS hat 1.60. So that's what I need to put into the dashboard. Let's go back to configuration and we'll just click leave page. And again, we have no modem selection, just like we had last time because we'd never finished picking it. And it is MMDVM HS hat. And it's not the dual hat, it's just the regular hat. We click that and we click apply changes. And it will tell us that it is stopping services and applying configuration changes. And then it will take us back to the configuration page. We'll click on dashboard. And now you can see that I have a modem firmware and you can see that I have a modem port, and you can see that I have modem speed. So we are good to go. We're also idle because we have no mode set. Now we need to go set some modes and do some more configuration. And if we scroll down this page, you now have MMDVM host configuration settings, which we didn't have before. And I want to do YSF mode. Yezu System Fusion. And at the bottom, if your MMDVM board has a display, pick one. The one that I have has the three inch display. That's the only setting that we need to change. So I'm gonna click apply changes. Now I wanna go back to admin and configuration and I wanna set a default YSF room. So under admin, I'm gonna click YSF manager. Now that we have Fusion picked as a valid mode, we now have Fusion options that we can make. So I wanna change my startup host to be the Toad's digital talk group. So I'm gonna drop down the box and instead of hunting through and trying to find out where Toads is in the list, I'm just gonna type it in. T-O-A-D-S, Toads Digital, right there. Uppercase host files, all the rest of this stuff is just fine. So I'm gonna click apply changes. And then one of the things that you can do now that we've got the YSF set up and the YSF rooms set up is on the back side of things, you can do cross moding. And what we have on the Toads Digital link is YSF, DSTAR, and DMR. So I'm gonna put my DMR ID in here. And I believe, we'll have to test this out, but I believe that if I key up on my YSF radio into the YSF room and it cross modes over into DSTAR, all of this stuff should link up, not DSTAR, DMR. All of this stuff should link up and we should be able to be seen for our DMR ID on the far side. Don't know, but it's fun to play with. And we have contacts on the YSF room. I'm gonna go into configuration and then I'm gonna go into admin and I'm gonna click on YSF Manager. And it currently shows that we are linked to Toads, YSF55295, which is what I wanted to see. Perfect, now we need to get a radio connected. One of the really neat features about the W0CHP dashboard is the live caller option. If I click on the live caller option, this page here pops up, and this is a fantastic way to have a little dashboard running off in the corner and you can see who's talking, and it could be you when it's your turn to talk. When you key up, it'll show that you're currently the live caller. And when the person you're talking to keys up, it'll show them instead. Right now we can see that Keith VA3KSF is currently running the show. So I'm gonna put that down in the corner here so we can have it kind of in the background so we can see that it's working. And then we're gonna play around with the radio a little bit. So this is the Yezu FT70D. And the most important thing that you have to do, well, there's a lot of important things, but the most important thing you have to do when you're configuring this is set your call sign in the radio. Long press F to get into the deep F menu, and then you wanna to turn to option 64, which is the last option. So you can turn, if you're at option one, you can turn up to go to 64, or you can scroll around numerically until you get there. And it says, my call. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the F key to go into that, and then just make sure that your call sign is in the radio. In my case, my call sign's KM9G, and there she is in the radio. If you make a mistake, you can go left, with this button, or you can go right with this button to correct your mistakes. But if you don't put this in, you will be speaking YSF and the dashboard, the Pystar will ignore you because it doesn't trust you. Make it trust you by telling it that you are you, and then it will trust you just fine. So that's the configuration to get your call sign in. Press the F key to get back out, and then long press the F key to go out of the menu and back into radio mode. In our case, when we set up the PyStar dashboard, we chose 438-800, which was the default. So I'm gonna put 438-800, where's the zero? 438-800 into my radio, and then I need to push the mode button over here to get this to show DN for digital narrow. And now you can see down in the bottom corner here, it shows DN for digital narrow. You are good to go as far as making YSF contacts goes in the room that you're in. You can do a little bit more than this, but this would get you started. And I keyed up and it 
took over the frequency because this is my Pi Star. So you can see now it says KM9G, Steve McCrane, that's me, in Luck, Wisconsin, which is where I happen to be right now. So we are working, but we can go deeper than this. You can get slightly more interactive with your Pi Star from your radio, from the comfort of your easy chair. If you go into wires mode on the FT70 and probably on some other radios, but I have the FT70 here. So that's the one that I'm gonna show you. I need to press F for function once, which gets me into the function mode, not long press, just a short press. And then I wanna hit the AMS button down at the bottom and it's working on getting into wires mode. And you can see that it's now connected to toads. And so now I'm a lot more interactive on the radio than I was before. Doesn't seem like much of a difference because you're still PTT. Kilo Mike 9 Golf on Toads Digital. And it still works just fine. You can see it keyed up in the in the display down here in the corner. And then when I unkey, it recognizes that I've unkeyed. So it did the thing. Great. Now, why do you want to be in wires mode when you're doing this? In order to get into wires mode, you want to press the function key here. And then you want to long press the AMS key down here. And you'll see it says wires. And then it connects. And we're in. And now it shows toads. Okay, so what's one of the things you can do from your couch while you're in wires mode on the radio? Now you'll understand why the volume key on this is a little weird. I can now use this dial here to change over to a couple of different things. And I'll just show you one of the one of the easier things to do. So you get to this one that has the star on it, and you punch in the number of the room you want to join. I'm going to join the HRCC link, which is 0103. Seven. So I type in 01037 and I push the AMS key at the bottom and it's now connected to HRCC link. Kilo Mike 9 Golf on HRCC link. And I've keyed up and identified and nobody's there. So I'm going to switch it back to Toads. I'm going to go to that star section and I'm going to punch in the Toads number which is 55295. I'm going to hit that AMS key again. And we're now connected back to Toads. And if anybody was talking on Toads, we would immediately start hearing them. There are a lot of different rooms that you can get into on YSF on the internet. So how do you know what some of them are? There's a couple of different ways to do it. Let's take a look. First, I'm going to go into admin and then there's YSF manager here. And you can see that there's this drop down list and I can search for things. This is very convenient. I like this. So if I want to look for RV hams, people who like to RV while doing ham. There's this RV, but that's Rogue Valley. That's not recreational vehicles. And then there's RVSU. That might be something. I don't know. What else is there? Travel, maybe? There's Travel Link and there's Truck Travel. Let's see if there's anything for ATVs. Latvia. Okay. How about your favorite state that you live in? I'm going to Huntsville, Alabama for the Huntsville Ham Fest. So is there an Alabama? Spelling counts. Alabama Link. You can type this number into the radio like I just showed you, 02034, or you can pick it from here, and then you can pick link and request change. And you heard the radio, doo -doo -doo -doo. it just connected, and now it says Alabama. Perfect. Doesn't look like anybody's talking over there either. That happens from time to time. It's okay. I'm going to go back to Toads, where all my friends are. And we just connected again. What if you wanted to download that list and look at it at your leisure? There's this list of YSF reflectors. I'm going to go ahead and click that. And that opens up a new page and takes me to the internet. And then you can do the same thing with the search button here. Toads, Alabama or whatever the case may be. Or you can just scroll through the list in a slightly bigger, easier to read fashion. Once you are all done playing YSF digital radio in the wires mode and you wanna get back to regular mode, just hold down the mode key and it will switch you back to regular radio mode. From there, you probably wanna get it into FM mode. So press the mode key and we switch from digital narrow to very wide to FM and back to digital narrow. I want to be on FM. A quick note about big antennas and big signals. This is a five watt HT and you probably want to turn it onto low power mode since you're typically going to be sitting in the same house, same location, same ham shack as your Pi Star and you want to use as little power as possible so you don't cause any interference. You probably won't cause any interference, but you also don't want to overload the front end on your Pi Star MMDVM hat. If you have any comments or questions about the procedure that we went through today or if you need a little bit more information, feel free to leave a comment down below or to join us on the Toads Discord. There's a digital radio room on the Toads Discord where we talk about YSF, D-Star, DMR, and Pi Star hotspots all day long. And we'd love to have you over there. There is also links in the description down below for all of the tools that I used in this video to make this connection possible. Otherwise, there's a video right over here I think you might enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll be over there waiting for you.